Hello everyone, welcome back to Coffee with Kem and Hills. Happy Monday. As you can see, we are not on our typical set. We are at the Steel Point Boat Show in Bridgeport, Connecticut. Not gonna lie, it's a little windy. Yep, we've got some elements. <laughs> not gonna lie, my notes actually <laughs> flew off the table and into the water, but they did survive to tell the tale, so we are okay. Uh-huh. <laughs> <sighs> but it is a beautiful day. It is. It's a gorgeous day. We're here at the Steel Point Marina and it is, there's some beautiful boats around. There's also oh some wonderful cars. They come at a and cost, I'll tell you that yeah. much. <laughs> and yeah, we're really excited. Even if it is windy and there's lots of lots of elements we aren't used to but here we are and we're excited to be out in the sunshine yeah it's nice to get out it's a beautiful day i know usually we're down we're down in the set <laughs> there's no windows and now look at us <laughs> exactly it's beautiful and we have like some beautiful music playing too mm -hmm. so we've got a lot we've got a lot going on yeah <laughs> um okay we're gonna have kind of a nautical theme today for our topics because mm. have you can you notice i i decided I know, you to did dress really, in theme you did I really get, well with i that. love a good theme yeah you did really well <laughs> with that. I if I had like a little captain's hat, I would have worn that Oh, too. I thought about ordering it. But I was going to look on Amazon and see if I could get a next day delivery mm, of a captain's hat. But that would have been fun. You know. You know. That's okay. Next time. It probably would have helped next actually year. with the hair at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So moving on to our hot topics. Um, so mm -hmm. seven questions to ask yourself before buying a boat. Yep. This was interesting because I... Actually, my dad is a huge boater. He actually, he basically picked up his life, moved on to a 46 foot sailboat, and he sailed around the world for almost six years and visited like 56 countries. That sounds so amazing. <laughs> I know, it is amazing, but it definitely comes at a cost. <laughs> <laughs> and I actually called him to see, say like, oh, is this accurate? Like, mm -hmm. do you relate to, you know, everything that's in this article? And he was like, oh my gosh, yes. Um, I actually learned quite a few things about boat maintenance and costs that yeah. I did not know. Um, I mean, obviously there's the initial cost, right, of actually purchasing the boat, which right. they don't actually cover in this article from on the water. Because it seems like the least of your worries, <laughs> <Yeah>. actually. <laughs> so, <laughs> But I think it's one of those hobbies, though expensive, if yeah. it's a passion of yours it's certainly worth it but there's some things to certainly take into consideration oh, massively yeah. as as you decide to purchase a boat yes well the first thing on the list is can you afford the worst case scenario mm. i mean i guess that can be really applied to anything in life yes but i think it happens more often than not on boats because there's so much wear and tear and they're sitting in water, oftentimes salt water, which mm -hmm. creates a lot of unforeseen damage and such, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the article, they talk about how um, sometimes you can purchase a boat, especially if it's a really great deal, um, yes. a used boat, and sometimes yes. it's um, not a really great deal because you need to do more maintenance on it to actually get it onto the water. Yes. And there have been times where it just sinks or you have to replace the entire engine. Yeah. And that might have not have been a cost you had anticipated when right. you were purchasing the boat. Yes, and apparently in the boat world, <laughs> boat stands for break out another thousand, which I thought was funny in reading the article. And actually, without saying anything to my dad, I called him about this. He was like, he was like, do you know what boat stands for? I was like, yes, I just learned it. And I guess it's a real thing. Like, that's what they all say. But then they also say, say your engine breaks down, then it's break out another tens of thousands. Mm, <laughs> so yeah. it can be, it can be a pricey, it, you know. But yes, you cannot avoid yearly maintenance on your boat. So that's something that you have to factor in when you're thinking about purchasing a boat, which mm -hmm. takes us to the next one. Yes. Um, are you prepared to spend 10% of the new purchase price on annual maintenance? Mm -hmm. All boats need an annual maintenance. So even if you get a brand new boat, you're still gonna need annual maintenance. And likely it's not always going to be 10% every year, but that's right. kind of the average that you can expect to, if you wanna plan ahead. Some years it'll be less, a lot of times it'll be a lot more, <laughs> <laughs> but it will likely balance out to around 10% if you wanna try and plan ahead. 
I think it's really interesting. One of the things that the article points out is that you're basically purchasing a floating house yes. that has not only mechanical, but electrical, as well as waste, most likely, yep. and maybe heat and air conditioning systems all all on it. Oh my and gosh. all of these have to be maintained just like you do at your own home. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you're renting, you don't have to necessarily pay for all those things, but if you own a home, you are. Yeah. So, and not everything has to be um, replaced, but like every 10 years that one of those systems is, you know, needs to be replaced typically. So yeah. it is definitely a lot of cost. And your house is in like in the elements. Right. There's so much wear and tear happening. Yeah. That exactly. you have to consider, and apparently it's just happening all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know that really exhausted my dad in his <sighs> ventures on the sea. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the next one. Am I buying for today's needs, tomorrow's needs, next year's needs, or the needs, our needs three to five years from now? Um, I thought yeah. that this was really smart. Yeah. I mean, it's... I think sometimes people get really excited about like the idea of a boat and like right now what they really want. Yes. Um, yeah. But it really is an investment. Mm. And mm -hmm. you have to think about is, is that boat you want now, is that gonna serve you, your family, your needs, you know, three to five years from now. Right. Um, the author of this article said he tries to think of his needs five years from now, but then owning the boat for like 10 years. So like right. hopefully he's not just thinking about the next season, but just like how is this going to evolve with him for the next five years? Very yeah. similar when you're looking for a house or even a rental property. Right. Most people aren't just planning on moving after a year right you're like okay am i going to start a family do we have enough right how will this serve me for the future like for you know however yep. many children i want to have right. or vice right. versa right does it have enough room for the dogs that i'm going to foster right I don't know. these you are know? important questions to ask yourself unless you have the money just to say hey i'm going to get a boat for this year and then five <laughs> years i'll deal with it <laughs> then do exactly do each your own <laughs> enjoy <laughs> Next, you need to consider where you will use it mm -hmm. and is it suitable for that area? So you have to think about the fact like the boat needs to complement the waters it will be sailing in. So the boat you've been dreaming about having <laughs> might not be the best boat to sail in the specific area you want to sail in. And you don't want to find that out after like driving away with the boat and it's like, <laughs> you know, you're flailing all over the place and you're like, oh shoot, this maybe isn't right for this area. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, the author tells a story about how he purchased a flat bottom boat and yep. in the sound between like Martha's Vineyard and the Cape yeah. was not the best, not the ideal <laughs> for the waves that he was encountering with his family and was no. like, probably should have taking it for a test drive or something to figure out if this is the right shape. A really big whoops. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he's taking that boat to a boat show. <laughs> All right, we're gonna take a quick commercial break, but we'll be right back to talk a little bit more about seven questions to ask yourself before buying a boat. the wind is just like wild <laughs> can you tell from our hair and the expressions on our faces I, ah! I know it's like <laughs> it's intense over here it kind of feels nice if I wasn't on camera this would be lovely <laughs> true very true yeah <laughs> all right next on our list we are not done yet is where will you slip or trailer your boat you have to mm. consider this and apparently I learned this in the article it's really complicated. There's like some serious wait lists just to get into a marina. <laughs> yes. Apparently five to 15 years, depending on oh, the yeah, marina. Oh yeah, it's like a mooring. Yeah. Also, I didn't know uh, like the difference between, I know what a marina is. I think uh -huh. most people do, but a mooring and a slip. And I had to ask my dad. Okay. And School the, us. The slip. <laughs> it's in my notes, but let's see. The slip is actually at the dock. Okay. So you actually have a spot at the dock. Um, the mooring is when you're like, you're in the marina, but you have, of a set anchor that you go to. Ah, so you're not necessarily on the dock, but you have to take like a little dinghy or something. Yeah, so to then get you would to... dinghy, you would dinghy okay. in and out. All so, right. hey, <laughs> I'm such a boat person now. You are. Can't even help it. What really surprised me that its slip fees were $150 to $200 per foot of your boat. Yes. That, I was like, 
that's a smart way for marinas to calculate how much to charge for a slip. Oh, and that's per month. That's true. Yep. That's per um, month. So, I, but that I don't know, in my mind, I thought it was like a parking spot where it's like, you know, $300 for a slip, no matter how All big right. your boat is. But it makes sense. Well, I know when I was reading it, I was thinking like 150 to 250 total, right. not like per foot. I was like, <laughs> oh, jeez. There's so many costs to factor in. It's It's nuts. Yes. And all, like you just have to also be ready that I, apparently when you buy a boat, you're probably going to be commuting to that boat for a while yes. until a spot opens up at, you know, whatever location is closest to you because mm -hmm. it, it's like high demand. It's like daycare. It's like daycare. <laughs> <laughs> Another thing to factor in is where will you store your boat in the winter? It kind of feels like there's a winter storm going on right now, yeah. but it's like um, a warm winter storm. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, you need to saran wrap your boat. Yeah. Um, yeah. Which you can do on your own. Yeah, but you it can does DIY take it. some hours to do so. Yeah. Um, I know. I was trying to picture the process, and of course, I'm picturing it with like the saran wrap that's in my kitchen. <laughs> totally. You know what I mean? <laughs> yes. Like when you used to saran wrap people's cars in high school. Is oh. that a thing? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Did you like saran wrap your principal's car or something? No, God, no. Just That's other hilarious. people in our class. Oh, okay, so you're like an expert at this. You could saran wrap one of these boats right now. I don't know how secure it was. I don't think it, <laughs> I lived in California. Like, it was not for winterizing. It, it was for jokes. It wouldn't protect the boat from the elements. <laughs> but it would make us laugh. So basically. you can DIY it or you can pay somebody, but you certainly need to make sure that it's in a place that is going to maintain it right. and is going to do you know like apparently you have to flush all the water out so it doesn't freeze yep, and you have to maintain pipes. the engine and there's all these checks you can do and they even warned you in the article about if you are having somebody else do it mm -hmm. you really you actually have to check their work to make yeah. sure that they have really been doing their due diligence to make sure that the boat is in good condition when you're ready to start sailing boating again yeah um, so sometimes it's better just to if you can you know trailer at home and just have it there and do it yourself yeah if, you, if yeah. you have the space and if you know how <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like I don't know um, next is who will fix it when it breaks yep. my dad this was interesting because he um, oftentimes they would find like a couple or people that they would sail with yes which just made it a little more social and fun so they do a big long crossing you know across the Atlantic and they would have like some friends that they would do it with right, right. and he had this um, one friend from Chile who was just an amazing mechanic and he would just fix things on both their boats and he said it saved him so much money but then when you know they parted ways <laughs> the, cost, a the cost went up massively yeah. so well, and one of the things the article also touches on is that since boats have been such a commodity and such in high demand because of COVID and pandemic timing, yeah. that maintenance on them and repairs have also gone up. Similar to like, how, you know, building houses and stuff like that. Right. Like, all of those costs are at a premium right now. And so people are having to pay more to get them repaired. And they're talking about how more people are buying the boats as well because yeah. of the pandemic and just kind of wanting, you know, that freedom of being able, I mean, what better freedom than having a boat, honestly. Right. You can literally escape on the waters. You can. And it's, I mean, it is, this article scared me. <laughs> I was like, I don't know if this will ever be in my world, but you know, per se. <laughs> But if you are interested in purchasing a boat, you can always come to the Steel Point Boat Show here in Bridgeport, Connecticut. It happens in June of every year, and yep. it's a great place to come check out boats. And the boats are beautiful. And see which one is the best one for you. Yes. All right, thank you for joining us on this very special episode of Coffee with Kem and Hills. We are actually gonna be here all week, so this is not, you're gonna be able to look at more boats. <laughs> For the rest of the week. <laughs> How exciting, right? Um, thank you so much for joining us. We will see you again tomorrow for another episode of Coffee with Kevin Hills. You can catch us always on ROI TV, where? On Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple TV, or on your own phone, whether it's an iPhone or an Android. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon.